Well, um, my grandmother was um, into witchcraft. She was into voodoo. She had voodoo dolls. And, and me and my two older sisters were very young when we were introduced to witchcraft and incantation books uh, by my grandmother. And we would, like any normal child back in the, in the early 70s, we were performing seances with our friends down the street. Hey there, everybody. I hope y'all are doing great. And in this video, we're going to dive in a bit more on the danger of witchcraft. And I'll be including real life examples of people who dabble in these sort of immoral activities, which quite unfortunately is quite widespread in a world that has forgotten God. And it goes without saying, thanks so much for your support of this channel, taking the time to watch the videos and joining in any discussion in the comments we're having. So anyway, we've shared a few videos before where Father Lampert, Father Ripperger, and Father Carlos Martins spoke about the danger of the occult, witchcraft, seance, Ouija board, and so on. And just a little disclaimer though, I'm not trying to get you interested with witchcraft or even Satanism through this video, but rather to share with you the danger of these things by sharing some clips of real life people who dabbled with these stuff. While I was going through some videos for research in order to make this compilation, there's this one particular video that caught my attention. Now this woman claims that she's an exorcist and that she exorcised demons for a living. At the start of this one particular video, she even called on the Archangel Michael. It seems pretty standard, but not before she goes on sharing the method she uses to perform the so-called exorcism. One of the things that I have to do every day is keep my vibration high. It is time to release this karmic connection. I'm Rachel, and I'm an exorcist. Before I go any further with these witches, Satanists, and so on, let me just share with you a bit what Father Ripperger warned us about witchcraft. A great deal of work of the exorcists around the world is the result of trying to undo the damage of magic and witchcraft. We ought never to have anything to do with the demonic, so you cannot invoke the demonic in order to gain something. It is even worse, St. Thomas says, if there is some sacrifice which is done in order to get what we want. So people who engage in witchcraft where they do these demonic sacrifices, um, for instance, you even hear of this, they'll actually sacrifice children and things like that which is one of the reasons why young children show up missing very often in this country because they're stolen in order to sacrifice them to the demonic in order to get something. That is the very invoking of the demonic is sinful. That is why we're always being very careful of which exorcist or people we choose to feature in our videos just to make sure that the information shared is solid and not something someone gained through shady means. I mean, how can you claim to exorcise demons when you're using the help of demons to get rid of demons? Gods and goddesses, Archangel Michael, I ask you please to stand at the head of the body. And later in this video, you can actually see how many people are rather ignorant about the danger of the occults, witchcraft, seance, and these type of things. Here, watch this so that you know what I mean. So tonight I invited a bunch of friends over for a seance, which I host sometimes. What that means is they've come over to try and contact some deceased loved ones. The first time I came, I didn't mean to bring anything, but I wore a shawl that was my grandmother's. And um, she did come through, and she did tell me to break up with my boyfriend, and I did. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so when the opportunity presented itself, I was like, this is, sounds very interesting. And uh, I also would love to talk to my grandparents who passed away. My grandmother came through. Rachel said that the person was telling her, like, I am not a white lady, and that's literally my grandmother. Uh, she's very much like, I'm black. She is saying to you that you have everything you need to do the thing that's in your brain, that thing that you want to do. You got to stop doubting that. That thing that you are like, I got to get there, I got to go there, you got it. My grandmother, she died of cancer, and she was like a, a badass. She wasn't afraid of death. You always wonder what happens to people after they pass. It felt really good to like hear that she's doing good and that she's so proud of me, which really means a lot. My friends just remember this, that seance or communicating with the dead is sinful and wrong. It has been said many, many times before, not only by these exorcists, but other priests as well, that seance is wrong. Let us make it very clear that it was not that woman's grandmother who sent those messages through that seance, but rather it was the demons who communicated with the group that night. Unfortunately, people who claim to be Christian, unfortunately, will bl blend occult practices into their faith. They may be going to church on Sunday, but then they're dabbling in the occult. It's like they 
they want to have their cake and eat it too, so to speak, meaning they're combining elements of the occult with their Christian faith. People may not fully understand that when they do that, it's actually allowing the devil to have some type of foothold into their lives. So I always say the best practice is if something is contrary to the Christian faith, then people need to root that out of their lives. This is Julia Lopez, who comes from a family of five generation of witches, and Julia's story is a little heartbreaking because it was witchcraft that led to the death of her father, and according to her, it was the death of her father that became the turning point of the rest of her family turning away from witchcraft and turned towards Christ. Yes, so I basically come from a five generations of witches. My mom was involved in it, my grandmother, my great grandmother so i think it actually it it goes more but as far as we know is is five and then it ends in me I, I i cut that generational course i always said it ends in me it has to end in me and that's what i have done i i broke the uh, uh, generational course uh, from my bloodline so according to julia witchcraft is basically when you are controlling and manipulating people and it's basically through rituals and through things which is an attempt of trying to control people with the help of the demonic earlier in this video i shared a short clip of father ripperger warning us about using witchcraft to gain something in our lives but father ripperger also spoke a bit about white magic and black magic as well here let me share again what Father Ripperger said about it and then I'll also share what this former witch Julia said about the whole thing as well. There's one distinction which says that white, there is a, called a white magic, which is innocuous, it's just a sleight of hand where they deceive you for just a moment because you th look at one thing but they in fact did another. But this is based on a form of intellectual deception and it's not actually based on any demonic activity. Then there's what we call black magic which uses a demonic agency. Now that distinction is valid and it actually works. But then there's another distinction which people make which is actually a false distinction. They say that there's a kind of white magic which uses a demonic agency but it is for a good end. And then there's black magic which uses a demonic agency for a bad end. And so there are some who are ignorant that think that using white magic in this sense is okay. But in fact it is immoral because of the use of the demonic. And now let's hear what Julia said about the white and black magic so that we can reflect back what Father Ripperger just said about the whole thing a moment ago. So witchcraft is basically when you are controlling and manipulating people. So it's basically through rituals and through things. You basically, you are trying to control people. You are trying to... Also, it depends on what the type of witchcraft that you are moving in. So we went from moving from white witchcraft, which is basically the one that they said that is not that bad, which is bad. And it's basically just connecting with nature, trying to do like healing rituals and apparently good things, which is not. And then we jump to the black witchcraft, which was more about manipulating people, uh, sacrifices and doing certain things to have our, our way. So witchcraft is always going to try to, to, uh, um, to make you think that you have the power, which is now New Age is trying to tell people like, hey, you have the power, you can control, you can declare things and manifest things and think things and, and astral project. So basically witchcraft is that. It gives, it makes you uh, feel that you have a power that you cannot find anywhere else. And that you, with that power, you can control people, you can change circumstances. So that's kind of like also how uh, witchcraft runs, control, manipulation, uh, making you feel that you are the only one that has uh, that power. And this is Sandy Bloyd, who really went through a horrible childhood. Her father was a Satanist, and Sandy was even dedicated to Satan by her own father, whom she lost her virginity to. Her grandmother was into witchcraft, and the family even had a familiar spirit called Mrs. Corral. Apparently, her parents introduced the spirit to Sandy and her two other sisters, telling them that the spirit would be the one that would guide them and take care of them throughout their lives. According to Sandy, they would often start out asking the spirit questions, just like what people do when they are playing the Ouija board. Witchcraft is, well, every, every form of Satanism, witchcraft control, um, necromancy, um, sorcery, divination, talking to the dead, um, conjuring up, up spirits. But Satanism is blatant, blatant serving Satan, doing it for Satan, where sacrifices are involved. 
um, sexual sacrifices, blood sacrifices, human sacrifices. That's the difference. June 1993, my daughter was uh, almost three years old. And uh, the night before, I had had a black hooded entity come to me and remind me of the generational uh, cycle that I needed to pass on to my children. So you actually saw a black hooded yes. spirit. Yes. And you talked to it. Or I, talked I talked to, you. to He talked to me and he kept saying, it's time for you to pass on to your daughter what your grandmother had passed on to you. At that moment in my life, I knew there was no control over this. There was no way that I could control or keep my daughter safe, save my life. And so in my mind, um, I just wanted to take my life. I, I would be dead. I would be no more trauma. My daughter would be adopted, possibly into a, a family where she would have some kind of hope at a, as a, nor at a normal life. Witchcraft, magic, and divination always stem from a desire to control and manipulate reality and situations in our lives, rather than humbly making our requests known to an all-powerful and all-loving God. However, in a culture that has forgotten God, witchcraft can be attractive because of its grasp at power and control. We don't need to grasp at control or try to manipulate things, whether by magic or other means. What we need today is trust in God, and if we trust in Him, everything is going to be okay. That's why prayer is so important because prayer is the school of trusting God. And also remember what Father Vincent Lampert always said during his lectures that the best antidote to magic and spells for Christians is frequenting the sacraments. You can't stop someone from placing a curse, but as a Christian, if you are you praying to God and going to Him, the curse will have no power, Father Lampert said.